Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm David Bird with Reality Reimagine. I'm an award-winning photographer and Photoshop artist that specializes in fantasy composite art. And today we're going to show you how to completely replace one color in an image with another one. We've certainly explored how to change colors in images in the retouching series, but today I'm going to show you how to completely replace a color with a new color of your choosing. Now this video is going to be brief and it's in response to a viewer's question on how to do this. So the first example is going to be indicative of their question but I'm also going to show you how to use this technique in Photoshop to give you a really interesting artistic color grade to your image very, very quickly. So let's dive into Photoshop and explore how to replace color. And by the way, Josie, you're welcome. So the viewer's request was to change the color and completely replace it with another one in a text graphic that they're working on. So that's the first example that we're going to explore today in today's video. First, you can see I have a layer here with the letter R and it's been filled with the color magenta. I wanna point out it's been filled with one specific version of magenta. There is no shift to the hue, the saturation, or the luminance of this color. So for instance, there is not a brighter version of, of magenta at the top and a darker version of magenta at the bottom, which would imply a shift in the hue, the lightness, and the saturation. It's all one color. And that will become important in just a moment when we continue to explore the new technique here. But let's also acknowledge that in Photoshop, there are multiple ways of doing something. There are many ways to change colors to be something else. And we certainly explored some of that in the retouching series, which if you're new to the channel, welcome. Make sure to take a look at the card above. It will take you to the retouching series when you're done with today's video. The way I'm going to show you how to change this color has been around in Photoshop for a very long time, and it has some interesting opportunities not only to change color, but to make some interesting color grades into your work. And it's called Replace Color. So to get to that dialog, we come up to Image, Adjustments, and Replace Color. Now let's go over this dialogue and explore some of its basics functions. So in this specific example, first and foremost, no matter what tool you're on, when you open the replace color dialogue, it defaults to the eyedropper tool because that's how you engage the dialogue. You need to use the eyedropper to sample a color in your scene. So I'm moving the cursor over. I'm going to click anywhere in the letter. And when I do, it finds the color that's in the scene. Now the next most important part of this dialogue is this square here where we see black and then the white letter R. This square is a visual representation of what Photoshop found when I said target a color. It's akin to the layer mask system. So like a layer mask that we would see here in the layers window, it's kind of the same thing here. Anything in black is showing us that it did not find this color anywhere else in the scene. Anything that's white is saying, yes, I did find this color and this visual representation of white is everywhere in your document that I found the color. So with this letter being filled with one specific version of magenta, that's why we have a perfect white letter R here because it's Photoshop showing us in the replace color dialog, this is where I found the color you've selected everywhere in your scene. So down at the bottom, result. This is the same as the color here because we've done nothing to change it. So there's two ways to start changing the color. We can use these sliders of hue, saturation, and lightness and start moving things around. So I can take the hue slider and start sliding it to the left and right. And as you can see, we get a real time view of what's happening. So let's change it to, let's go to blue. I like blue, blue is my favorite color. So then I can increase or decrease the saturation. I can increase the lightness of it. I can increase the darkness of it. And as I do, this window here is changing to show us the targeted result. This color everywhere in this scene will be changed to this based upon the selections that I made here. The second way to change the color and my more preferred way of doing it is to actually use the color picker. And to do that, we just simply click this window and it'll bring up the color picker itself. So now I can visually target a color. I can say, all right, I want a lighter blue. So I'm moving the little triangle down, getting closer to those teals and turquoise. And I'm moving, I like that one. So I click it, I get a visual representation, but notice down here, the hue, saturation, and lightness sliders have changed to show me that result. So I work better not by numbers, but by looking at the colors themselves. That's why I like this option with the color picker itself. So I hit okay, and now, Anywhere where this color is in my document, it's going to produce this result. But the final most important thing is to explore the fuzziness slider. So 
the fuzziness side, it always makes me laugh. It's such a poor choice of a word like to use for a control mechanism in photo. Fuzzy. It's just whatever. So the fuzziness slider, thing, think of the fuzziness slider like an opacity slider. So the opacity of a layer, as we reduce the opacity of the layer, it starts going down till we can't see it. The same thing comes into play with fuzziness. Now there's another use of the fuzziness slider, and we'll get to that in the second example today in today's video. But for this one, when you wanna change one specific color to be a completely different color, fuzziness, think of it like opacity. So as I move this up and down to its maximum of 200 or zero, nothing is changing here, and nothing is changing over in our live view of what's happening. But Again, this is like opacity. So set to zero, we're not actually going to get this result of color if I were to hit OK. If I take it all the way up to a fuzziness of 200 and I hit OK, nothing visually changed in our live view because now it just went ahead and gave us that new color at an opacity of one or 200% or a fuzziness of 200%. So it completely replaced the magenta to the color that we selected. I'm going to hit control or command and the letter Z to go one step back in my history and repeat this process. Adjustments, replace color. Now, when you open up the replace color dialog for a second time, the color that was your result will now be the new targeted color. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the eyedropper tool, find the magenta, come down here, pick a new version of blue and say, okay. Now I'm gonna take the fuzziness all the way to zero. And I want you to keep looking at this live view of the letter R because I'm gonna hit okay in the window, but keep looking here. When I do, it's not changing to that full version of the color we chose because again, think of the fuzziness slider like opacity. We didn't let it find the color all the way through and expand outward into the scene. So that's how you replace the color, one specific color with a new one in something like a text graphic. And we went over the basic functions of the replace color dialog. Now let's move on to the second example and explore more artistic ways of using replace color and explore some further options of the fuzz in the sliders and the eyedropper tools. And that will be with this image of my friend Danielle. You've seen her in previous videos here on the channel. If you'd like to see more of her amazing artwork, visit the Instagram account at the link below. So in this scene, it's natural light, lights coming in, there's no strobes. What are the colors we see in this scene? Well, I see a lot of yellows and oranges that it's in her hair and her skin tone. We talk about in the retouching series that regardless of your ethnicity, every human being on earth has yellow and orange in their skin tone. I see yellow and orange in the couch, in the frame of the couch, the rug, the pillows just to a degree. And then of course, the color green on the massive wall of plants that's sitting behind her. Yes, there's the color red of the roses that are on her shirt, but I want to use replace color to change the color in this picture, one of the available colors, to be something dramatic and bold. So that if people are scrolling by my Instagram or Facebook or my website, they'll see this picture and go, whoa, that's the, ooh, it's something captivating and it pulls them in with color. If I change plants to not be green and to be something else, that's definitely going to accomplish that. If I change the roses to be another color, yes, roses are a plant. However, it's such a small offering in this picture of that color. So if somebody's scrolling by, it's very unlikely that they're going to be like, now, wait a second, roses are supposed to be red and that's not, that's blue, that's weird, no. But if the entire wall behind her becomes blue, that's definitely going to pull focus because yes, plants being an, uh, another color besides green is interesting, but more importantly, from a composition perspective, almost half of this image is green. The other half is yellow and orange. So that's the color that I wanna target, is the green in this picture and change it to be something else. But what do I change it to? We have an opportunity to use color theory as we talked about in the retouching series. So let's go to my friend, the color wheel. So here is the color green in the color wheel. Now we've talked about using a complementary color when you're thinking about using some kind of color in the scene. So in this case, if I wanna change the green to be something else, I can look at the complement of green, which is opposite color from green on the color wheel, which is red. Now these are the two colors, red and green, that are often used in the winter holiday color palettes. So I certainly can explore changing green to red, but that's not necessarily what I want to do because there's another color in this picture. It's the yellow and the orange that's in her skin tone or hair, the couch and so forth. So we know we have a lot of green in the scene. We have a lot of yellow and orange in the scene. This is where the color theory of the triad comes into play, where we divide the color wheel into thirds. So in this case, if we look at the triad, the triad would be the green, the orange, and the third color, according to the color theory of the triad, is purple. So that will probably be the color that I use 
in the scene. But the reason why I love the replace color dialogue to not only be able to change the color, but to artistically enhance your image in a very cool, funky way with the color grade is because you have the option of the color picker and the hue slider. You can explore all the colors in the spectrum if you want to. But to use color theory and start to drive your artwork with a little bit of purposeful intent, the triad is what I want to explore and the purple will be the color that I choose. So I'm going to come back to the picture of Danielle and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer because we're going to be altering the colors in the scene. And we can say, I want you to target the green, but as we use the fuzziness slider and so forth, this color green is elsewhere in the scene besides just the plants behind her. It's in the scene in the couch, on her legs, the pillows, everything, because when we take a photograph, it's red, green, and blue working together to be able to produce what we see in this image. So I'm gonna duplicate the layer by hitting Control or Command and the letter J. And this is the layer, layer number one, that will actually change the colors. And then we'll use a layer mask to take it away anywhere where we don't want it to be. So with this layer active, I'm gonna come up to Image, Adjustments, and Replace Color. Now it brings up the dialogue. Again, this is the last color that we landed on. And we can see instantaneously, these little white dots are showing us where it actually found this color in the scene. So even though this was a color that we previously used in the other example, it has found it in the scene on a fuzziness of zero. Let's take a look at this color of blue. This color of blue is certainly getting up toward the blues here, but it's not a deep blue. So it's closer to the greens than it is to the magentas and so forth. So I'm gonna hit cancel. Now I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool as intended, as default, and come into the scene. And I'm gonna pick one of these plants. And keep in mind, there's varying shades of green in these plants. There's some yellow greens, some blue greens, some green greens maybe, and whatever else. So let's pick the plant right there. Now, fuzziness is set to zero, so we still see this color here. And it has found it by these little dots. But as I start to increase the fuzziness, it's starting to expand outward. It's looking for this color as a target and then anything that's similar to it and continue to find it in the scene. Now that's one way to start expanding out the offering of the color itself. Or I can bring the fuzziness back to zero and I can use these two eyedropper tools. This one will add to the selection. So this is the first color that we clicked. I'm gonna click this one and say, keep this color. Look for this color in the scene, but let's expand outward just a little bit and find that yellow green. And when I do, more of the selection, which is represented here in this window, is being found. But notice it found the green in her legs, the couch, a little bit of the rug, and so forth. So as I continue to use this eyedropper tool to add to the selection, let's go find that green, and that one, and that one, and that one. It's changing this dialogue. Now, this is a fuzziness set to zero. If I increase the fuzziness, it's going to, again, use those colors that we selected, all of them, and start expanding outward trying to find it. So let's leave the fuzziness at 72, and the number is arbitrary. And now let's actually start playing around. So let's come to the color picker itself. Let's pick a shade of purple like that, a version of purple. There we go, and hit OK. Now, the plants have changed. So has her hair, a little bit of the couch, her legs just a touch the rug itself, we have a funky, interesting result, a color grade, if you will, to the scene, because we've changed the colors intellectually with purpose and artistically, but it's heaviest in the plants because the plants were the strongest source of the targeted colors that we chose. As we continue to increase the fuzziness, as you can see, she's turning into a smurf, cold, dead, I don't know, but it looks horrible on her. So as we continue to expand it outward, the plants are changing just a little bit, but not by much. And as I reduce the fuzziness back to zero, notice how some of the plants have changed, but not all of them. So again, you have a lot of freedom and a lot of opportunity for artistic experimentation inside of this replace color dialogue, all with these controls and sliders. So increasing the fuzziness just a little bit more, I think that actually looks really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now we have a new layer that has all of this effect on it. And I can just simply leave it this way. Her hair color has changed. Her skin is pretty much the same. 
the couch has changed and so forth. This is an interesting dichotomy of colors and we can explore that. We can add some artistic enhancement on top of this of thinking about things like color, luminosity and detail. So we can saturate the color a little bit more, add a little bit more contrast to the scene and sharpen it up and produce it and put it out into the world and say we're done. But since it's a duplicate layer, we can also put a layer mask onto it and simply paint it away where we know we don't want it to be like places like starting with her skin. So I'm going to paint black onto this layer mask with a flow and opacity of 100% and completely take it away from her skin. And I'm not being very precise because I'm just trying to hurry for the purposes of the video. But once we get it off of her skin entirely, and over here on her leg and down to her foot, we again can leave her hair this other color and it's it's an interesting effect and it certainly makes a statement. What's also funny is that the leaves uh, on her shirt have turned, they were green and now they've turned to purple because they were pretty much one color of green and so they're just kind of staying in that family. They're not shifting as much as these plants are. We can also go through the process of taking it off completely of her hair, her body, the couch, and preserve that idea of the color theory of the triad. So that we see the yellows and oranges in the scene, we see now the purples. Now there isn't obviously a triad in this to a degree because we've eliminated the green except from her shirt. But that little hint of it can certainly help to support that or you can just stay in these two colors. All of this is possible because of the replace color dialogue itself and again, it offers so many opportunities. So let's finish up today's video with some final thoughts about replace color. As I've said in previous videos, experimentation is key as you continue to expand your knowledge in Photoshop. Experimentation is of course key in your artistic work as well, trying new lighting patterns, different lenses, photographing different genres of photography and expanding your artistic horizons. But when you're trying to learn why things work in Photoshop, experimentation is key. And that's why Replace Color is such a powerful tool because you get the option to just keep selecting random colors, changing those colors to be something completely different all over the spectrum until you find something that works. And with the layer mask system and the layer system in Photoshop, using the layer masks, using blending modes, you can start getting some really interesting results. But I caution you, as you continue to experiment, take every opportunity that you can find to do it with purpose. And that's why I wanted to show you the color wheel and the triad. I wasn't just arbitrarily willy nilly going, mm, I'm changing the green to yellow or to orange or something else. Using color theory is one way to artistically work and expand your artwork with purpose. And that's what's going to give you the best results the fastest as you continue to explore Photoshop itself. That's the end of the video. If you like the content you found in it today, make sure to give the video a like and consider subscribing to the channel because new content debuts each week in photography and Photoshop education. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified of that new content when you return to the YouTubes. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you out there in the world of Photoshop.